Thật là không có cái gì mấy cái rồi ngắm rồi gì Welcome right right guys, I'm Chad and I'm Chad. Today we are going to follow on the build series that we've already produced with actually building the alien. The next step is to set up the flight controller. I know a lot of you guys have asked for this, so here we go. We've already got a, a finished quad here. It doesn't look like the one you built. No, it's not. Well, it is. It's just been... In the video. It's been used. First of all, what we're going to need is the user interface to control this. I've got on the screen here some of the places Wait, that I Wait, but where do you get it? You get it on here. I'm on your show. computer. So everybody has to Facebook Chad yep. and ask for his computer. Or you get it from this website here, which is the kiss.flyduino.net uh, homepage kiss.flyduino.net forward slash downloads so you can download the user interface there if you're trying a, a, a new one or and you can also download any of the firmwares that we're going to be upgrading any of the flow controller firmwares any of the ESC firmwares will all be available there that's the public release ones so of course if there's any beta testing or you want to do anything like that you can go to the RC groups forum there's the kiss ESC and the kiss FC forum on there where when they get it out there when they want people to do beta testing it's all available there so beta. everything is available there beta. but if you want the easy way to set it up you get the Chrome app launcher and if you go into <coughs> the Chrome app launcher you'll they get this to come up and you've got all these apps so it's kind of like the 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 Apple app store so you just search thing. for kiss you, yeah you, go to, you go to the web store here mm -hmm. open that up and then just type in kiss FC and, Ooh, you've got and there's there. a picture of it, so you and know what it looks like. It looks like this. Same thing. It looks like that on there. So all you need to do is add to Chrome, and it'll download it for it's you. Super fast. So all easy, very simple to do, and you've got the user interface there. <laughs> Update the firmware on the oh, FC. So we to make sure that we have the latest one. Have but Chad, to? updating firmware is scary to me. Has it been Not. made simpler? It is made simpler. You can do it. Do it the user interface. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Where you want to get the latest firmware, you can either get a beta firmware or the latest firmware through the RC Groups forum, or or I'm, I'm still yeah, I, I, the beta. Yeah. Beta. Or like I said, you can get the latest firmware through the Flyduino website, which we showed earlier. Put that onto your desktop, and then it's a simple matter of going through the update process, which I'm going to go through now. So all you need is a micro USB cable. Hook it up to the computer. What I will, before you plug it in, okay. we've actually got this little bootloader button here. And what we need to do is we need to press this bootloader button down and hold it. While I plug it in? Then you plug it in. Okay. And when you plug it in, it will notice that it's in bootloader mode and... It's switched already. You've still got to hold that down the entire process, so don't okay. let go. Select the firmware that you wish to use. So I'm going to go through, I've got my... Also, be careful with that button. I know a few people that have ripped those buttons off. Yeah, you don't need to press very hard. Like, I've got hardly any pressure on there at all. It just needs to stay down. Select the firmware that you want, press open, and then when it asks you, you just press flash firmware. So you're holding it down the yep. whole time. This last little bit you can let go before uh, at the end of that. And you'll but know it's good because it says success. Exactly. Perfect. So now all we need to do is recycle the power, disconnect the USB. And when we first connect, one thing that you will notice is the flight controller itself is flashing a blue light. Flashing that little... And there's a green light on the other side. That's correct. That's the power light. And the blue light is the status light. When it's flashing like that once every second, what that is basically saying is that it needs to be activated and it needs to be proven that it's not a, a counterfeit board or anything like that to protect the property of this flight controller. So all you need to do is make sure that your computer is hooked up to the internet and then just press save settings. It's no longer flashing and you'll see down here in this section down here that it actually now says activated. So oh, wow. that's the serial number and, never, it's all, and it's all activated. I didn't know all of that. Now uh, there's some new firmware that's coming through and I highly recommend that you update them to the latest version because there is a, a big improvement in performance and bug fixing and things like that and that's pretty easy to do as well. So first of all what you want to do is you want to have a battery spare that you can plug in. So of course if you're going to be plugging in a battery always make sure that you disconnect the props for safety reasons. Ah! I've not done it plenty of times and I've scared the crap out of myself plenty of times and I've cut my hands plenty of times. If you do, Chad's going to come around your house with that finger. And I'm going to point it at you. Yeah. 
Actually, that's not from a prop, but it makes the point. Exactly. What? Plugging in the power, and then we go over to the ESC flasher tab, and Ooh, then it does warning. the usual thing. It says, dangerous, dangerous, warning, Will Robinson. So that's telling you to remove your props. Exactly. If you chop yourself in half and the house burns down, it's not our fault. Okay, I accept the risks. All right. And this is a very similar thing to flashing the flight controller. Do you have to have the telemetry, the signal ground, no, nope. and everything. So just the PWM can be yes. hooked up. I this. have successfully flashed with just the signal wire. Okay. So um, what I'm asking is, there's five wires that come off the ESC. You have your your main ground, your main power, and then you have a PWM, a telemetry, and a signal ground. And you're saying you only have to have the PWM and yep. the main and the yep. and the main power. I can't actually speak for what Flyduino recommends, but uh, you know it works. But out. I have successfully flashed with only the signal wire and no, not the signal ground and not signal telemetry. With regards to the flight controller flashing progress, people that are using PCs and newer versions of Windows, like Windows 10, are having driver issues until that gets fixed. Flash the old style way using the DF use program. We'll put a link in the description to a video that I had, one of the original versions of how to uh, flash that using a separate program. Let's face it, if you're using Windows, then you're used to basically yeah, you're used to having to fiddle with stuff. Exactly. So. so yeah, I mean, I can only suggest get a Mac, but they'll probably get booed out of the room by all the PC lovers out there. Probably. So for the majority of people out there, at the point in time that this will air, we'll be buying firmware with 1.02. So. The way that you know what firmware you've got on there, there will be a sticker on there that will say either 1.01 or 1.02 or newer. It's important to know that if you've got version 1 or version 1.01, you can't actually flash through the user interface. You actually need to use a USB UART that you solder on there to update to 1.02. Now you only need to do that once. Once you update to 1.02, then you'll be able to flash as usual through there. I will have a video on how to do that shortly. There are some others out there. It takes probably about five minutes per ESC to do, and then you're back like that. Now we've gone to the ESC flasher tab. We've selected the firmware, and once again, this firmware will be available on the kiss.flyduino.net website. So I am going to select that one that I'm testing currently. People are watching this, can they get that version? That version is just being released for beta testing now. And but you're gonna recommend updates. for people watching this probably just flash with the latest stable version. Yeah, the latest stable one is all you need and it's all that's required, but I'm just flashing the one that I'm currently using on there. The important thing here is that we do have to have power connected because we need power to the ESCs. We didn't have to do that for the flight control. No, you did didn't, we? but you okay. do need to do it for the ESCs. That's why we've got that on there. That's why we've got the motors disconnected. So once we've got the all that... propellers disconnected. Sorry, pro yeah, propellers. Now let me go on record to say that you do not need to remove your motors because people are going to ask that. Right, that's yep. why I clarify. Flash firmware, and it'll do the same thing. It'll start flashing. This is going to take probably one, one and a half minutes to completely flash with it. With the flight controller, took maybe five seconds. That's specifically for safety reasons. Flyduino's done that so that the motors don't accidentally st start up. You'll notice that all four ESCs are flashing simultaneously as well as the status light on the flight controller. When this has finished flashing, you'll hear the ESCs reboot. They get dee dee dee. The lights will go out and you'll get a screen basically saying that uh, everything's finished but you need to recycle the power. So it says ESC flashing complete! Three exclamation points. Yeah. Should be so four. Disconnect the power, disconnect the ESC, the, sorry, the, the flight controller USB, and it's all ready to go. You just need to recycle that to get back into the flight controller. I have already done some videos on my YouTube channel about what everything does. So the purpose um, of this is to get you in the air. Yeah. The type of quad, we're flying an X type quad, so we don't need to change that. The next R is the receiver. So we're going to be using FreeSky SBUS. The fail safe setting I set to zero. So basically what that means is when it get, hits fail safe, the motors turn off because I don't want it descending with motors on because I just personally find that very dangerous. So I set that to zero. What we want is min throttle to be at 1050 rather than 1070 because the KISS ESCs will start up at 1048. So a couple of points above that and you're golden. Then we have down here min command. So this is the very simple process of just setting that to 1000. So when you set uh, min command to 1000, you're enabling uh, air mode to be 
uh, enabled for the for the flight. So we're just going to keep that very simple and put that there. So basically, what that means is, as soon as you arm air motors enabled, the motors are going to start at 1,050, which is two points above what the ESCs start at. So you're going to have the ESCs going to be turning as, as slow as they can with air mode turned on. Air mode is basically just it's the it's what every, most everyone flies these days to allow you to have good control at low. Throttle. It allows your yeah, so if you go down all the way on your throttle, you still have control of your quad. Yeah, so of course there is other things like throttle cut, which a lot of us pilots also use, but I'm not going to get into that right now because we're just trying to keep Because you're very transitioning simple. into air mode. Yeah, I'm actually changing some of my quads over to air mode because uh, I'm testing between the two of them, and they've both got positives and minuses, but uh, there are some things about air mode that I, that I quite enjoy. So anyway, uh, as far as max throttle, 2000, where it is default is fine. Uh, mid command, 1500 is fine. Try your mid, we don't need to touch. Try and we don't need to touch. Since we're using KISS uh, 24 amp ESCs, we can check one shot 42 rather than one shot 125 since that supports that. A 3D mode, we don't need to worry about it. FC rotation, we don't need to worry about that. That's just where you got it placed. So if you put the flight controller in correctly, as per the build video with the arrow pointing forwards, we don't need to touch that. The auxiliary channels, these are just all the little fancy little channels that you can sort of customize things. In the build, we're keeping it very, very simple. So all we need to worry about is arm. So we click aux one to arm, and then when we set up the radio, auxiliary one switch, wherever we set that up, is going to be the arm switch. And last down here, we have the filter. On this particular build, I know we set that to off, and it's going to run perfectly fine. So I'm just going to press save settings now. So you're just doing that before you move on to the other stuff, just exactly, to kind of yeah. save progress. Yeah, I mean, you, you can forget about it and accidentally close things down out of the window. And if unless you press save, it won't actually save it. Also worth noting that if you actually have a battery plugged in, it will not save anything on there. So it's a safety feature. All of these flight controllers have certain bugs that if you save something, it might turn a motor on. And uh, that's happened to me in the past. So as a safety feature with the KISS FC, if you've got power plugged into there, it will not save anything and it will not reboot. So okay. you, uh, always make sure you've got your, your battery disconnected. Now we're going to the PIDs. And we're going to go to the PIDs and we're going to go to the rates. I'll be perfectly honest and say that the default PIDs with a quad like this, without a GoPro on it, actually fly really well. Uh, it, particularly if you're just And that's learning. what I'm seeing right now? Yeah, that's the default So you're saying PIDs. I could take it as it is, right there yep. with the PID rate, PIDs and rates and go fly it. And you'd be pretty happy with it. Uh, and particularly if you're learning, that's perfectly fine. So don't feel that you have to fiddle with that. With something like this, that would actually fly quite well. And I'm, I'm actually quite surprised at how well it, it flies. But we will put some figures in there that will make it fly better. Every quad is slightly different. So these figures will not work for everything. It, I can't guarantee it's always going to work. But for every alien that I've put it on, it's been an improvement. So if you wanted to uh, back up your settings, it's a simple matter of going to the bottom of the screen here, pressing back up. Then you just give it a name and tell it where to go and then press save and it will save those settings for you. Then later on, once you've flashed the firmware or you want to change it, the simple matter of going down to restore and then you select the one that you want and the one that I want is right here. Uh, once we've backed it up and you've flashed a new uh, flight controller firmware or whatever you want to change it, it's just a simple matter of pressing restore and then going to the file that you want to restore Press open, pressing save settings, now it's saved. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna go through the PIDs of what I've selected in there. So you'll see that P4 roll, pitch, and yaw are slightly higher. Roll is only a bit slightly and pitch a little bit more because there's more weight distributed over the pitch axis, you need a little bit of a higher, higher P gain. Basically what that's gonna do is just gonna make the quad feel a bit more tight and a bit more responsive in the air. Yeah. Is... We're gonna do a video on some basic tuning on sort of stuff. But... This is the quick start guide. Yeah, our, uh, our eye gains I've turned End up ever so slightly on roll and pitch. Uh, I actually only on only on pitch. Roll and yaw are all default on that. D gain. I've just turned it a little bit up on pitch. As far as the rates are concerned, RC rate for roll and pitch is 1.02. We got 1.2 on yaw. We got 0.8 on roll and pitch for rate and 0.75 on your and we've got no RC curve. RC curve is just uh, Flyduino's way of calling it Expo. The reason why I've got those set the way that I have is purely because rate has a feeling of both 
increasing the movement, but also has an exponential feel as well to it as well. So, so it, do people level out rate and use RC curve instead, or do they use them in conjunction with one another? Who would use RC curve? I'm actually, uh, in my, my freestyle uh, settings, I've actually got a little bit of curve. Rate and RC curve, what rate does is rate increases the, the, roll, the, the rate of rotation. But it also what it does is as you move the stick away from the center, you know, on the on the transmitter, it relaxes the PID controller. So normally, if you wouldn't have that, what happens is the PID controller is actually trying to fight your movements. So it allows for a quicker, uh, more crisp uh, flip. Mm. So it feels like Expo, but it's not quite Expo. So they all both have a very slight different feel to them. Uh, it's very hard to explain. It's a matter of going out there and flying it and just feeling the difference, getting the, the combination between RC rate, rate and RC curve right, and a lot of people struggle with it. I know it took me ages to, to get a feeling for it, and when I set up a new quad, it tends to take a while. That probably takes longer than actually tuning for me to, to get right. So what's the level? The level section there is purely for self-leveling mode. I do not tune in level mode. I have not flown level mode in years. Uh, that's not really somewhere that and I'm And you will cover. belittle people that fly in level mode. Yes, constantly. So, of course, if we go further down, we also have, if you press the show advanced configuration, Ooh. we have some advanced figures down here as well. I, I would have ever looked in there. I would suggest not touching that with the new firmware that's coming out that I'm testing that I'm actually not using it anymore. So I actually don't touch any so of that So we can anymore. go fly. Yeah. We're, we, are, we are ready to go fly. Okay. So that is the flight controller setup video. Done! And we're all done. Because people want to go fly. So, can I yank this? Lit, no, lit, there's least, one more thing. Least lit. I always like just press save settings because you can't remember whether you saved it or not. And it's then disconnect. Safe. Now you're ready to go. Boom. Bye. He took my quad. I've got to go too. <laughs>